We need to talk about something that is utter freaking nonsense. Every time I get on YouTube, there are people talking about the next big hit watch, the next big investment watch, or how much they ridiculously overpaid for some standard sports watch. Watches in general lose a ton of value. They're like cars. You drive it off the lot, they depreciate. Rolex, Audemars Piguet, or Piguet, however you want to go that way, and Patek Philippe are really the only exceptions to this rule in that they tend to retain more value than others. And believe me, if you pick the wrong ones in any of those brands, you're just as unlikely to make any money and you're more likely to lose a lot of money. Anybody ever heard of Rolex Cellini? Anybody ever heard about Patek Philippe Calatravas? Or any AP complication watch that's not a Royal Oak? In general, they tend to crash in value. Anybody that tells you that investing in watches is a surefire way to accrue wealth is full of nonsense, absolute nonsense. And you don't have to listen to me about this. You can look at the recent watch trending. If you look at watchcharts.com, in the last two years, the overall watch market has lost over 20% of its value. And Rolex, which everybody says is basically unstoppable from accruing wealth and increasing in value, it's down over 15%. And what's ridiculous to me in this current AD environment where every watch is now unobtainium, people are paying absurd amount of money for standard stainless steel sports watches. I have to tell you, the stainless steel sports watch craze is the biggest scam that I've ever seen go across the watch community. That people are paying more money for cheaper watches than equivalently like 18 karat gold ones is absolutely ludicrous. A whole list of these modern Rolex sports watches in stainless steel, stainless steel is the same stuff they make Seiko's out of and watches under $100, including Casio's. Whether or not it's surgical grade or not, let's, let's be real, we're, we're splitting hairs here. People are paying double retail for some of these things. It's absurd. So in this video, I wanted to do two things. One is watches are not an investment. And if you're spending money on a watch, expect you're gonna lose it. And if you make money, that's great. Hopefully you end up neutral. But odds are, especially by any brand besides the three I mentioned, Omega, Breitling, any of it, you're you're right, you're writing your money off. These watches are not investments. You're guaranteed to have your value almost overnight. But if you're looking to buy a watch in general, in, in this Rolex specific video, I want to walk through the ones that I think are most overly inflated in the market today, and a counterpart or an exception that you can pick up for a lot less money or for similar money that I think is much better value. If you were gonna say watches are an investment, these would be my strategy picks as future classics, but watches aren't investments and I'm not telling you you're gonna make money on these things. But what I will tell you is dollar for dollar, these watches are a far better investment than their equivalent stainless steel ones that are super hyped out right now. So without further ado, let me get off my little rant here. We'll go ahead and get started on my list of what I think are the most inflated watches right now in the Rolex catalog in terms of value and what I'd actually buy instead. Before we get started, quick wristwatch check. We're in my mother of pearl Rolex day date in new old stock condition. All right, let's get started. Let's pick up with the most infamous Rolex sports watch that everybody thinks they need to have. And before people jump to conclusions or tell me I'm wrong, feel free to dig through my archives. I'm very familiar with this first watch. We're gonna talk about the Rolex stainless steel Daytona. And spoiler alert, I've owned one. I owned a 2001 P serial 4130 in-house movement black dial. And let me hear let me tell you right now, these watches are massively overvalued right now. We're talking about a watch that up until recently was like $12,000 retail. It's gone up again since then. That cost Rolex, I don't know, maybe $1,000 to make if we're being generous towards Rolex and what it costs to make these things. And these things are trading on the second-hand market for well into the $20,000 range for a stainless steel chronograph sports watch without even a date function. The equivalent Omega Speedmaster, which was actually similar to the model that went to the moon with a Lamania based beautiful movement, the 1863 can be had for $8,000 all day long and usually with a discount. These watches are massively overinflated based on the idea that they are rare and they're unobtainable. They're not. I can tell you as a matter of fact, when I see Daytonas, this is the most common Daytona I see. I see the Panda dial every time I see a Daytona. What I don't see are the ones in precious metal as commonly. And the people that buy these watches, I get it. And let me be clear, at retail, it's an awesome watch. I legitimately like this watch just fine. The ceramic bezel really honestly takes it another level beyond the one that I used to have. Nothing against this watch, but it is not a $20,000 watch at all. And anybody that pays $20,000 plus for this watch is absurd. So 
rather than just telling you why this is such a terrible buy, let me tell you what a better buy would be. 116523 Two Tone Daytona. That's the 4130 movement in house. These things are available online anywhere from beating the crap $14,000 to let's say 20,000 on the high end mint box and papers, totally new old stock. With this watch, you're getting the same watch as the stainless steel Daytona. You're getting it available whenever you wanna buy it. You're not having to play these silly dealer games. It has the Rolex in-house 4130 movement that everybody wants. And it comes with 18 karat gold on it. It's not just stainless steel. Now, is this watch worth $14,000 to make the Rolex? Of course not, it's marked up. But let's be real. For less than half the money of what you're gonna pay super markup gray market for a Panda Dial Daytona right now, you can have a stainless and 18 karat gold model whenever you want it that's already depreciated in value. So you can buy one that's hyped up in the market right now that over time is likely gonna come down when the next model comes out, or you can buy one that's already depreciated that actually has precious metal on it costs Rolex more to make. To me, this is not a difficult decision to make. Let's pick on our uh, next victim here. If you want a newer GMT, as you've seen, those things are also super inflated right now. You pick your color combination, whether it's Pepsi, whether it's, and especially if you want on the Jubilee, good luck getting one of those. Um, there's so many variations of this with silly nicknames, and there's a Sprite, the left-hander, which I'm not really into, to be honest with you, that are all double retail all day long for the most part. Or you get one at retail if you wait four years, or you, you bribe your AD with a bunch of purchases you don't really want to make. These watches, if you want the GMT, I got an inside tip for you. Just go buy a pre-owned 116713 or 116710. This is the ceramic 40 millimeter version of the GMT without the bezel difference. It doesn't have a colored bezel on it, but especially the one ending in three version, that is two-tone 18 karat gold. You can pick one of these up quite easily for under $12,000, and you're getting an 18 karat gold and stainless watch that's already depreciated. I don't think this is a very difficult decision to make. You're getting a watch that costs more new, a watch that costs more for Rolex to make, and you're getting it for less money than you're gonna be able to pay for any of these, these current stainless steel ones, assuming you can even find one. Let's talk about another stainless steel sports watch, the Rolex Submariner. Everybody is in love with the Hulk. I remember back in the day, I was gonna buy one of those for about 10K. Now they're almost $20,000 consistently used. Beautiful watch, I understand why people like them. Current version, Starbucks, they seem to be less interested for people than the, the Hulk. I actually like the Starbucks better, but I currently have a minority here. These watches, again, all day are trading well above retail, and if you can get one at retail, it's because you waited a very long time or you spent a lot of money in that AD for you to get one. Similar to what I said with the GMT Master, if you want a really nice sub, why don't you just get a 116613 two-tone sub? 18 karat gold, you can get a black bezel or a blue bezel. Blue bezel would actually be my choice. And you're getting a watch that again, has precious metal on it, 18 karat gold, for less money than you're gonna pay for a stainless steel sports watch that is not as limited as Rolex would have you believe is. And then for my last just little nitpick, this whole titanium yacht master thing. I don't get this watch at all, quite honestly. I know a lot of people do, I get why you appreciate it. I'm not a titanium guy but obviously the market disagrees with me and the people like these watches a lot. I'm, I'm glad they do and good for Rolex. I do like the coloration of the bezel. I think it's kind of cool. Why not get a 16622 Yachtmaster from about 10 or 15 years ago? Just like this Yachtmaster, it has a very similar design to it, except the difference is it has a platinum bezel and a platinum dial. So again, a watch that in all likelihood costs Rolex a lot more money to manufacture than this current titanium version and it's gonna cost you less than half if you can even get one at retail what this current Yacht Master is. So do you want a platinum and stainless Yacht Master or do you wanna pay two or three times as much for a titanium one? The question is yours to answer. To me, the answer is very black and white. There is so much good value, I think, on these ones that I've mentioned to you as alternatives that I literally have no interest in a lot of these modern sports watches because honestly, it's a benefit for people like me because it's making all the other watches that I like a better value. I think the 18 karat gold and stainless market is hugely undervalued and there's a lot of good value there to be picked up on. Skip the AD, go to the used market, find a deal you like, get some real value. And always remember, watches are not investments. You may win some, more likely you're gonna lose some. Ask any of us that have been trading watches for years and years and years. I've been through about 70 or 80 watches. I don't really wanna remember at this point. 
I've probably broken even. I've had some really big wins and I've had some really big losses. And overall, it's been about net neutral. But if I wanted to make money on watches, I would have taken all that money out of my watches and put it in the stock market and played just a basic mutual fund. And I would have been way ahead of what I made on my Rolexes. So rant over. Hope you guys found this helpful. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below. No doubt people disagree with me and I absolutely respect that. But watches are not investments. Don't fall in the trap of the, of the trending watches. Buy something you like, get a better deal, buy it used, buy it depreciated. Catch you guys later. Please like and subscribe.